lovely people. Happy Christmas. Yay. Cheers. Got my little glass of Prosecco on the go. How are you all? How are you all today? I really hope you're all well. I am. I am just kicking back and chilling and it's glorious. So by the time you're seeing this, um, for those in the UK and Europe, hopefully by now, you'll have had your Christmas lunch, you'll have had your big feast. It's time to kick off your shoes, put your fluffy socks on, your slippers, whatever, put an elasticated waist on. Let's all just take a deep breath and relax. Now that the big thing is out of the way, the, um, the feast, oh my goodness, we'll come on to the feast in a minute, but let's start with a bit of housekeeping straight away. Firstly, eek, this year there won't be a Christmas cracker and a Christmas hat. Oh no! <laughs> I have a really beautiful um, cracker and hat made from fabric. They're reusable. I've used it for the last couple of years, last couple of Christmases. Uh, it was from Geraldine beautifully made but <laughs> last year after Christmas after I chopped the Christmas video it was sometime in that week between Christmas and the new year when I get very kind of it's the only time of year I get like this I get a bit kind of like right clean spring clean sort have a clear out chuck things out charity all that kind of stuff and also during that period last year I started packing to move house. I know. <laughs> well, I didn't know how this year was going to go, did I? Anyway, so I, I did start doing some packing and I don't know where I put my cracker. I've got it. I know I've got it somewhere, but I think it's in a top cupboard, in my top cupboard right at the back somewhere. And I need to get a little step stool. I need to get myself a step stool because in the past I climb on a chair to get into that cupboard. Tried it the other day and I thought, no, I don't trust my knees to climb on the chair. Anyway, so for this year and this year only, no Christmas cracker. Well, I say this Christmas only because hopefully next Christmas I'll be opening my, I mean, I'll be pulling my cracker in a new home. Here's hoping. Also, to say straight away, as I have my little bit of Prosecco to sip on, thank you to Joanne <laughs> uh, for my Prosecco, and Sarah and Ian sent me a really cute little bottle of Prosecco, and Penny for some beers, some lovely Hogsback beers, a little kind of, um, a run of three. Had one last night, it's lovely Hogsback haven't had it before it's um it's a bitter beautiful dark rich brown color so amber yeah amber is the word for it uh really enjoyed it because it i find some bitters can be really sort of heavy and cloying almost but this was sort of rich but it's it was still light and only 4% alcohol, I say only 4% because it seems like loads of beers these days, they're 5, 6, 7, 8%. I saw a beer that was something like 9.6%. It's like, that's not beer, that's wine. <laughs> anyway, so really appreciated a beer last night and because I love the taste, I just don't want to get hammered. Uh, yeah, so thank you to the th three lots of you for alcohol and as far as food goes ah so i have one of these later oh my dink isn't that cute lovely packaging joe sent me a hamper so joanne sorry sent me a hamper so these were in the hamper so we'll have one later do a little taste test i need two tables today one for anyway um but also down here oh my goodness big bag this is this is three lots of gifts. Now, I, I'll come on to gifts in a second, but this, <laughs> it's full of chocolate, as in, you know, let's have a couple out, like, you know, full-size chocolate bars and bags of chocolates. So I have 
to thank for this lot, Kate, Barbara, you'll recognise the bag Barbara, and Veronique. Veronique sent me a selection box. Oh, I squealed when I opened the box. Um, thank you so much. I mean, that's a lot of chocolate. I reckon that's a bar of chocolate a month for the next year which is more than enough chocolate for anyone. So, I mean, there's so much there that I'm sure if I have friends over, I will share. If I go and visit with friends, I will share. Because sharing a gift makes it even more special, doesn't it? But yeah, that is a lot of chocolate. What I'll do is I'll check all the use-by dates on them and I'll stack them up in the back with the, with the most extreme use-by date at the bottom. Thank you so much. And talking of food, um, a lovely, lovely box from Nikki. A sort of a hamper, excuse me while I stretch it down. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, I need an assistant today. Nikki picked up on a few things in videos and had obviously gone, hmm. <laughs> so I got a box with, uh, what do you call them? Like steam puddings, you know, sponge puddings. But it's the golden syrup sponge puddings. Yum. And a whole tin of golden syrup. So I can put extra syrup on my sponge puddings. Yum. It's funny because I was talking about the, the lion on the, on the pot of golden syrup. This one is a coronation edition. Look, you see it says, long live the king. Oh, my cheeks are flushed from that first sip of Prosecco. I've also got the heating on today. That's my Christmas present to myself. Yeah. Um, long live the king. I still can't get used to having a king and not a queen. I liked living in a queendom. But I was thinking it's so iconic, isn't it, this tin, that when I've finished using the contents, I'm going to give it a really good wash, a really good wash because it's sticky, and I'll keep the tin and I'll use it to put something in. I don't know, paper clips, elastic bands, whatever. Because I like the idea that this is the sort of tin that turns up, you know, let's say I live another, let's say I live another 40 years. When I pop my clogs and someone's clearing out my house, they find this and think, oh, I'll pop that on eBay and get a tenner for it in today's money. Whew, yeah, warm. So that was lovely. And <clears throat> she sent me the chickpeas and beans and all sorts of bits and bobs. But this I really, really appreciated. New hot water bottle. Oh, thank you, lovely. Because, here's my old one. Public information service. If you look, mine is, I don't know if the camera will pick this up because it's going to get too close. It's going to focus. Can you see this mark here? In it, it says 03. That's the date of manufacture of my hottie body. We should, for safety, replace our hot water bottles every two years. My hot water bottle's 20 years old. So finally, a brand new hot water bottle. Thank you, lovely. And that goes with the colours of like my blankets and things like that. So that's really gorgeous. Do we really need to replace them every two years? I don't know. I'm digressing already. And the other thing is... How do I throw this away? I don't know, it's, um, can it be recycled? I'll do some research. Uh, yeah, it seems a bit, it seems a bit of a shame if every couple of years we're all throwing this amount of stuff away. So yeah, I'll, I'll do a bit of research and find out if I can, oops, sorry, put that over there, if I can throw it away in a kind of, in a better, or in a more, <laughs> You know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, never mind that for now. Um, also, and I loved this, because this is definitely, um, she's picked up on in comments. There's a book, and I've had it twice. I've had it in my hands twice. I've put it in my shop, sold it twice. And every time I've sold it, I've thought, oh, I should have read that. I should read that. And it's come up in comments a few times. Anyway, I now have a copy of... The Hidden Life of Trees. Wonderful, how wonderful. What they feel, how they communicate, discoveries from a secret world. Peter Wall Wallaben. Wallaben. 
yeah a walk in it says at the back a walk in the woods will never be the same again how perfect i do feel like trees have been quite a strong theme in the last few weeks so nikki thank thank you lovely uh now i wasn't naughty i didn't unwrap any of that um they came straight from you know whoever supplied them and they weren't wrapped so that's how i i know what they are i didn't unwrap i didn't go peeking but look just <clears throat> sorry i need to blow my nose excuse me that's a little bit annoying, isn't it? Um, I've still got the tail ends of a cold. It's been lingering. It's been about 10 days now. I wish it would just do one. I don't, never mind about that today, apart from the fact that I might have to stop and start to blow the old schnozzle. Uh, yeah, that doesn't matter today, does it? But what I really, really wanted to say uh, before we, we, you know, before we get really into things today is thank you, <laughs> massive, massive thank you. I've had so many cards, gorgeous cards. Um, is it, is it on, I, I love this one. This was sold in aid of the RNLI. Look, all these lasses going out for a swim on Christmas Day. Who is that from again now? Marie. Marie, thank you. And I love it because you can tell it's RNLI, safety first, because they've all got their floats with them, their high-vis floats, particularly if you swim on your own, and particularly if it's a, a bit of water where there are there is a bit of boat traffic. Yeah, have our floats with us when we swim, because when a person is in water, they're quite hard to see, but with a float much more visible love that but i love all you know animals like the hare i love the hare fox sheeps <laughs> the owls oh i love this one from veronique the trees again the trees and i particularly love that that's sold in aid of breast cancer um research wellness oh and this little decoration came out of the card from patricia isn't that beautiful i think it's a bit of tatting <sighs> I need to look this one. There's always something to look up and learn, isn't there? But tatting, the difference between tatting and lace. And I think tatting is done on a hook like you would do crochet as opposed to lace, which you would do on a cushion and winding the thread around lots and lots of different needles. Really, really cute. And then I loved this card from Sarah and Ian. It's, can you see it's sort of fabric and it's all stitched of the reindeer and then I looked on the back because I always look at the back of cards too and it's from a quilt maker who's based in Saltburn which I know some of you will know it's is it in North Yorkshire or is it in Cleveland it's it's a couple of miles up the road from where my sister used to live and it's where I was checking out that flat. This time last year, I was looking at a flat in Saltburn. Um, oh, it was gorgeous. It was massive, massive flat. Really quite small garden, kind of a wraparound garden, really small. I mean, I'd do something with it, but the flat itself was huge, just down the road from my sister. Unfortunately, I should have known there was an issue because I mean, it seems so cheap, and at the time I thought, oh, it's cheap in comparison to London. Uh, but even for that area, it was cheap. The reason being, a subsidence. It had really bad subsidence. And my brother-in-law, who is um, who was in the building trade, he actually went and had a look at it for me. Well, they both went in my absence because I couldn't get up there. And he said, Vivi, do not touch it with a 10 foot barge pole, no matter how many feet are on the barge pole, don't touch it. But anyway, so it was lovely to, I turned that over and the saw of salt burn, it was like, oh, oh, kind of comes together. And that sort of brings me onto the subject and I'm gonna talk about this briefly and quickly because I don't wanna get upset. And I probably will, but that's okay. I have had so many gifts arrive this year and cards and letters I think I've had 11 parcels and some of those parcels contain two or three items. I've never had so many gifts in my entire life. <laughs> you know, when we were kids, we'd get three or four presents, that's it. 
there's so many presents thank you and i'm going to open some on camera with you because i want to i want to share the pleasure of that i want to say thank you um i was watching richard and paul's sunday chat and they opened gifts and i loved it i actually i got all like big really like when they were opening their gifts it's like what what is it what is it what did you get love it I'm so grateful because everyone has in some way or other, they in cards, letters that have come with them, um, have mentioned my sister. And folk have recognised, here we go, but we'll do this and we'll get it out of the way quickly. Thank you everyone for recognising that this would be a bit, maybe a bit of a tricky Christmas this year because it's my first without my sister. And the reason I'm so thrilled to have all these gifts, I mean, who doesn't like getting a gift anyway? But I'm particularly thrilled this year because it did occur to me about three or four weeks ago that this year, and I don't mean this in a poor or for nanny way, but this year I suddenly thought there won't be anything under the tree, under the metaphorical tree. I haven't bought a tree this year. But yeah, there won't be anything under the tree because my sister was the one who always sent gifts at Christmas. And that broke my heart a bit because <laughs> it's that connection every year. And, you know, over the years, my sister and I have loved buying gifts for each other. And it's funny because in so many ways, when I think about both of us, our tastes are quite different in many ways, but in all areas of our life and our taste, what have you, there's always that little bit of overlap in the middle. I'm doing a Venn diagram, can you tell? <laughs> Venn diagram. There's always that overlap in the middle. And over the years, especially say with birthdays, because we quite often gift each other on the middle day. So our birthdays are two days apart, middle day, sister day, let's gift each other. Um, but actually at Christmas too, because I used to go up there um, most Christmases. But yeah, we'd be opening our gifts to each other and I loved the look on her face as she's opening her gift from me. And she'd love it. And I'd say, I'm so glad you like it because I really want one as well. So we used to buy for each other the thing that we'd love to buy for ourselves, but it seems a bit, can't buy for oneself. So everything I ever bought for her, I would have loved to have had myself. And everything she ever bought for me, she would have loved to have herself. So yeah, it was a bit of a, I'll be honest, I got really down in the dumps and I thought there's gonna be nothing to open on Christmas day. And it, listen, I know there's worse problems in the world. Don't any trolls have a go at me. Um, but it's always been, for me, it's always been a highlight of of Christmas is to open my sister's gift, gifts, uh, uh, we usually end up buying sort of three or four bits for each other and then getting on the phone and having a really excited conversation about our gifts if we're not actually together at Christmas. So thank you to all, all of you. Um, some folks sent gifts, but a lot of folks sent cards and letters and whatever it what you know it, just a few simple words in a card really 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 touched me so thank you thank you thank you thank you so much oh my goodness so oh yeah it's that time of day isn't it to oh, let you let your food go down what did you have to eat are you traditional with what you have to eat i suppose it depends as well doesn't it whether you're on your own, small family, big gathering. Um, oh, and by the way, yes, I'm on my own at Christmas, but that's absolutely fine. I've got to an age where I actually quite enjoy doing Christmas on my own. It started with, in a way, it started with 2020 when, I think, did we have a, a second lockdown? Um, but yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I'm quite happy to be on my own because then I don't have to worry about my airs and graces. <laughs> I can eat what I want, do what I want. I can get up in the morning when I want, which is 
hours after the family. Um, yeah, so I, I, these days I quite enjoy having Christmas on my own and doing my own thing. I had invitations this Christmas. Um, there's always one or two friends who think that, or they say, you know, oh, you can't be on your own at Christmas. Like there's a law, there's not a law. <laughs> you do what you want if you can. If you can do what you want, um, yeah, do so. I loved it in my sort of 20s and 30s. There were a number of years, I'm gonna sneeze, I think. There were a number of years when I didn't spend Christmas with family, uh, but instead I hosted my own Christmas uh, and they became known as the Waifs and Strays Christmases. I would have my Waifs and Strays Christmas. And that was for friends of mine who also either didn't want to go home to family or couldn't. So quite often it was my friends who are South African, Australian, American and you know, airfares at that time of year are so expensive. So I'd say, well, never mind, let's all gather at mine and we'll be our own weird little family. Sorry, excuse me. I really need to sneeze. It's not happening. Hang on a sec. Maybe I need some bubbles up my nose. Nope, it's not happening. Yeah, so I loved the Waste and Strays Christmases and the idea was really simple that I would cook a main meal, so it was usually nut roast. I'll do a nut roast and all the vegetables, but everyone else, just bring something, bring anything. Bring yourself is the main thing, but, you know, bring wine, bring beers, whatever you fancy to drink. Bring some sweet treats. Bring a, bring a, I can't speak half a glass of Prosecco, I'm a cheap date. Um, yeah, bring a fruit basket, whatever you fancy. So we'd all cram into mine and quite often, yeah, people would stay over and I didn't have, you know, spare bedrooms. So it was a case of people would turn up with their sleeping bag, a bedding roll, hampers of food, clank, clank, bottles of wine, come in, come in. And Christmas day night, uh, so we'd, we'd eat, eat, drink and be merry, have parlour games all through the afternoon into the evening, talk, 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 talk. My God, me and my friends can talk for hours. And then gradually it would be sort of like one or two o'clock in the morning, so Christmas day going into Boxing Day. And gradually the bedding rolls would come out and be put down on the floor and the sleeping bags would come out and we'd all change into our gym jams and... People would start slithering down into their sleeping bags. And we're still drinking and chatting. And then maybe by about four or five o'clock in the morning, a hush starts to descend and it's time to go to sleep. And then in the morning, Boxing Day morning, I come downstairs and there's these like human caterpillars all over my living and dining room floor. All my friends kind of, you know, party hat askew glass by their head oh I loved that family is what you make it isn't it for me family has always been well my sister but my friends my friends are my family um I love that and I've lost touch with a, a couple of the folk from those days uh but I often think of them I always think of them at Christmas and I think I wonder if they remember those Christmases at mine in the, gosh, in the 90s. Yeah, in the 90s. Yeah, it was, it was the 90s. I wonder if they think back to those Christmases of turning into great big caterpillars on my living room floor. Oh, glorious, glorious, glorious. I think that's one of the things about Christmas, isn't it? That, now obviously I know a lot of you are Christian and for you today is you know, it's a sacred day and enjoy, enjoy it for that. But for those of us who aren't Christian, you know, I, I probably have a slightly more pagan attitude about Christmas and it being a celebration of solstice. The days are just, just starting to get a bit longer. You know, the sun is coming back. We will get warm again. But it's that idea of, of, 
kind of hunkering down in the winter we bring that greenery from outside in so we enjoy our greenery we feast we have special food we have special treats on this one day that will the joy of that hopefully will keep us going through into next year through to the warmer days and through to the next time we start harvesting again because let's face it by this time of year there's not much fresh stuff around is there it's a bit of what have we got? Kale, chard and beetroot. <laughs> no carrots this year, no parsnips this year. But yeah, it's we're, we're living now on stored food, stored rations. So to have this one day in the middle of the dark time to, to feast and eat beautiful food, to gather our friends, our family together, I love it. I love it. And even though, like I said, I'm on my own this year, that's fine, I'm quite happy to have a much quieter Christmas. My days of hullabaloo are, they're not done with necessarily. I could see hullabaloo in my future, um, but for now, I'm happy to do it the quiet way. I hope you're happy doing it whatever way you're doing it. Talking of food, I was also remembering, oh, just before I talk about remembering food, um, when I opened uh, Veronique's parcel, thank you, lovely. Fortunately, everything was wrapped, so I didn't see anything when I opened it, apart from the selection box, which I spotted straight away, even though it was in the bottom of the box. Then I've opened the rest this morning. And there were these items. I thought, what on earth is that? And then... In about the amount of time that it took me to think, what on earth is that? I knew what they were. I haven't seen these for years. Do you remember this style of decoration? Do it slowly like ASMR. Oh, oh. Oh. Even the sound of it. Isn't that gorgeous? Isn't that be I mean, it's a work of art, isn't it? Gorgeous paper decorations and bits in really close you can have a really close look oh beautiful the sound of it actually even <laughs> so i'm gonna clip it open properly but obviously these are gonna last me for years to come but just the act of doing that oh <laughs> i i get some kind of strange thrill from that Veronique, thank you. I love these. I'm going to, after we finish chatting, I'm going to open them up fully and hang them. I'm not sure. Oh, I can hang them from that light fixture up there. Anyway, yeah, that was a bit of a memory trip. I haven't seen these kind of decos for years. And I love, is this, have you, I'm sure you're probably all going to say, yeah, they, they've never gone away. Or maybe they did go away, but they're coming back as we all move away from the plastic tinsel tact and get into things which, you know, one day when these are, maybe in another 40 years, when they're bust and they, you know, tatty and they'll go in the compost heap. <laughs> anyway, I loved that, a little whoosh of memory lane. I think that's, the, I'm gonna have to blow my nose again, I'm so sorry. I think that's the thing about Christmas, isn't it? Is that um, it often, I think it's natural that because it's towards the end of the year, it's often a time of reflection, isn't it? And and memories, because, because Christmas Day is so distinct each day over the year in our lives. It's, when we think back through our life, what I'm trying to say is when we think back over our lives, because Christmas Day is so distinctive, Perhaps those memories are more brightly shining than other memories, just because it is such a distinct day. Um, but yeah, I was <clears throat> talking of food. I actually, one of the reasons I liked doing my Waifs and Strays Christmas was because I got to cook. <laughs> cook my lovely vegetarian feast. But I remember, I think it must have been the first year that I was fully veggie. It's probably... I, about 14 or so, I was 14 maybe. 
And as usual, we were at my aunt and uncle's. Um, oh, zingy. So for those of you who, this is your first time watching me, as a family, we always went to my aunt and uncle's for Christmas because my uncle was a Methodist minister. So he's working on Christmas morning. <laughs> it's a work day for him. So they couldn't go to anyone else. So there was him and my aunt and my two cousins. Then my mum, me and my sister, and grandma and granddad. And we'd all converge at um, my aunt and uncle's house, wherever that was, and stay for a few days. And that Christmas, when I was 14 or 15, it was obviously a case of, oh, well, what do we feed a vegetarian? Now, I would have been more than happy to get in the kitchen and cook something for myself. But it was a bit sort of... Um, yeah, in terms of kitchen stuff, like my mum never didn't do any cooking, like teaching or cooking with me when I was a kid. I don't know, she's quite hands off in that kind of way. Um, so the only kind of kitchen time we got was for veg prep oh, and washing up. I'll come to the washing up in a sec. Um, so, like I said, I would have happily stepped in and said, listen, you don't know what to cook a veggie, that's fine, I'll cook something for myself. But instead, I got a bowl of ravioli. <laughs> Vegetarian ravioli. Thanks. I mean, I appreciate being cooked for. I don't want to sound ungrateful, but just because I don't want to eat turkey doesn't mean I don't want to eat roast parsnips and roast potatoes and Brussels sprouts, my favourite. I love Brussels sprouts. Oh, this made me laugh, actually, in with... The chocolate's Barbara scent. Oh, Christmas vegetable chocolates. Look, Brussels sprouts and carrots. I'm not sure what the purple ones are supposed to be. What? Oh, it's red cabbage. Red cabbage, Brussels sprouts and carrots. I wanted all of that for my Christmas lunch. I really wanted all of that. Um, just not the turkey. In fact, I'd have been happy with just all the veg and not the turkey. I mean, I need some protein somewhere, but... Yeah, instead I got a bowl of ravioli in tomato sauce. <laughs> anyway. Um, gosh, yeah, the washing up. Now, shall we... I don't know how long I'm going to go on for today. <laughs> I mean, I could probably... I reckon I could talk non-stop for eight hours. No prompting. What do you think? Yeah. But... Should we have a little present opening? Because honestly, I've got such a mountain. I, yeah, I'm so grateful. I am truly grateful. This one has been winking at me. Um, I've been, I've been so good. I haven't, I haven't poked, I haven't prodded, I haven't squeezed. But I can see packets. <laughs> I'm like, I think I know what's in there. Do we think it's a book? I do. So this has come from M and M. Yorkshire M&M's, not my, so it's very confusing, isn't it? I've got Plot Friends M&M, they're the ones who um, emigrated to Norway. I think, was that M&M's card? Yeah, that's M&M's card from Norway. This is M&M, who are the gorgeous viewers. Do you remember when I got to Swanage? Hang on, let's do noisy paper. This book's... <laughs> I'm good guesser, aren't I? Um, are you opening something? Come on, open something with me. I don't want this to just all be me. Um, yeah, M&M are, you know, considering they're from Yorkshire, they're not bad. <laughs> yes, I'm being cheeky. I've got to be cheeky though, I'm a Lancastrian. Um, they are the gorgeous souls I met when, you remember when I went down to Swanage? And what was the issue? Oh yeah, that was it. The loos were broken on the train and that had made me really grumpy. And then I ended up, I got off the train in Wareham, had to go hightail it into a field to go and relieve myself and then get the bus all the way down to, anyway. Um, and I arrived in Swanage. I, I don't know why, I just felt grumpy that day. And I arrived at, where the bus arrives, it arrives at the old steam train station. And I thought, I'm going to use the loo here, even though I went in the field, it was 45 minutes later by the time I got down to Swanage. So I'd come onto the station platform a bit like, mm, I'd bought, I'd got a bus, not bought, I'd picked up a bus timetable at the station. 
and I was trying to put it in my suitcase and something was blocking it. I was getting in a right tizzy and then I heard, all right, Vivi, <laughs> hello, Vivi. <laughs> I turned around and it was Eminem. And so I went out a quick wait and then came and sat on the bench and we just had a lovely, I don't know, 40, 45 minutes just sitting and chatting. It was really cute. So this is from them. What is it? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Empire Antarctica, Ice Silence and Emperor Penguins. Uh, he fulfilled a lifetime's ambition when he spent 14 months at the base camp. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'll... I'll I was just, I'm going to get lost in my own moment. That's really selfish of me. So, Ice Silence and Emperor Penguins and Call of the White. So you see, it's like playing the words, Call of, or Call of the Wild. Taking the world to the South Pole. <gasps> Eight women, one unique expedition. Guys, thank you. Could you ski to the South Pole? That was the challenge that British adventurer Felicity Aston put to women from around the Commonwealth as she set out to create the most international all-female expedition ever to the Pole. They would not be experienced explorers, but ordinary women, that's in inverted commas, ordinary, who wanted to inspire others to follow their dreams or make a change for the better in their lives. I'm going to get emotional. That's really... I don't know why that's, that's just done something to me. Um, I think it's the, I think it's, I think it's talking about inspiring and, and dreams and making a change for the better. Crikey, that's a weird reaction, Vivi. Eminem, thank you so much. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to add that to my Hidden Life of the Trees from Nikki. I'm also going to open another one because, um... From, let me see now, is that from Alison? Because Alison, that's weird, that's a weird reaction, isn't it? Isn't it funny how we react to things? I think um, when things, somehow they, they hit, I was going to say hit a nerve, but, but that sounds bad when you think about, you know, oh, you've hit a nerve, it sounds like something that makes you angry, but... Striking a chord, let us say that, when something strikes a chord, how, you know, it's back to that book I read called Surfacing. You never know quite what's going to come up. And, well, certainly in my case, I never know when something's going to come up, when something's going to have that sort of effect on me. Right, I'm going to open this one from Alison because, um, so Alison's down in Dorset. Happy Christmas, Dorset. I mean, happy Christmas to every county. Um, and happy Christmas to everyone in Yorkshire. I am teasing when I say that M&M, uh, they're all right considering they're from Yorkshire. You know, it's an, it's an age old cheekiness between our two counties. I live, or I was born, should I say, and lived on the correct side of the Pennines. Um, yes, yeah, so Alison got in touch to say, she was sending me a book. Has it arrived? Right? Anyway, she's very excited about it, so I'm going to open it. It's got a little bit of bubble wrap, so I shall open it carefully in order to reuse it. I think my um, my mum was born during the Second World War. Where are you going with this, Vivi? And and my family was has always been you know it's a poor family working class i mean poverty class at times um so i have no doubt that my grandparents found it difficult in the war like everybody else did and i think their influence of frugality as a must because of poverty but then also the whole kind of the war influence of waste not want not that was obviously drilled into my mum and then that's come down to me because as I open things <laughs> like wrapping paper, bubble wrap, I'm always thinking, oh, do it carefully, do it nicely, you can save it and reuse it. Oh, Alison, thank you. 
a Dorset Christmas. Well, come on. How perfect is that? Fran and Jeff Doel. Doel. Explore the rich heritage of Christmas past in Dorset through this varied collection of carols and customs, seasonal recipes, stories, plays, pastimes and pantomimes and extracts from the seasonal writings of the great Dorset authors Thomas Hardy and William Barnes. To my shame, I don't know William Barnes, the great Dorset writer. Alison. Come on now, this this level of perfection. Oh, thank you, thank you, lovely. Um, I can't wait to get back down there. I cannot wait to get back down. You know, having that visit in October, ostensibly it was about um, fulfilling my sister's last wishes and taking her for a swim. God, it was good to get back in the water. It was so good. That first, those first few tentative steps into the sea and then the, what the, I had a handful of her and I was like, oh, what the heck, come on, let's go in. I could, and I was saying at the time when I made that video how I could hear her. It was like her voice. It's like she was standing on the beach going, get in, you chicken. <laughs> get your shoulders under. Um, yeah, and I took the plunge and went right in. And came up again it was like wow this is fantastic why have I not done this for four years this is ridiculously good and then for the rest of the day it was like you're not going to keep me out of the sea in out in out in out <laughs> shake it all about um yeah it was an amazing amazing trip so lovely you know really simple um and I haven't stopped thinking about it I can't stop thinking about it so I have to see, I'll have to see what funds allow. I've been saving really hard for the house move stuff, you know, solicitors. I won't go into all of that now. But I do think maybe in April, early May, not around Easter time. I don't want to go when it's too crowded or schools are out. But I think, you know, even if I get down there and just stay one night, I, I want to get back down there. I want to get back in the water. I want to hear the train go, whoo, whoo. <laughs> I want to smell the air. I just want to be there. So, um, yeah, I think another trip is in order. And oh, I have to blow my nose again. Do you know what? Rather than stop, start the camera, I'm just going to do it. So if you don't like nose blowing, block your ears for a second. <laughs> yeah, I think... Excuse me. I think it's time for me to get back to a, a minimum of an annual trip to Dorset, as I always used to. And I know it's, you know, it, it, often these things, it comes down to finances, doesn't it? But I have been saving so hard for the house move that once I've moved, all of that money that I've been saving for the house move, I can now think of a save up for, you know, three or four days in Dorset each year. Oh, be lovely. Um, or just, you know, just move there. I don't know. I don't know. Um, goodness me. Should we have one more? This is from Kate. Oh, let me just check. Sorry, I think it's Kate. Sent me a lovely letter. Katie, I'm sorry, it's Katie. And Katie, you have beautiful handwriting. I'm a bit obsessed about handwriting. Beautiful handwriting. Katie was just telling me a little bit about herself. And it's really lovely. You know, it's so lovely to hear from people. And quite often someone will, will drop me a letter to say, let me tell you a bit about me. And I love that because one of the beautiful things I've discovered through social media i mean yeah there's some horrible stuff about social media let's not dwell on it but one of the really beautiful things about social media is how we can connect together and how friendships can form and you know when i first discovered i didn't have a computer or you know pc until 2010 
tail end of 2009. I got it because I'd gone back to uni to study nursing. And at first I thought I would manage by using the computers at my library. Um, but it was it quickly became apparent that I would need much more than an hour on a computer each day because that's all my library allows for. I mean, I was on the computer for four or five hours a day most days, either doing my research or, you know, writing papers or what have you. Where was I going with this? Oh, yes, yeah, so social media. So in those early days of social media, I think I would have poo-pooed at anyone who talked about making friends via social media, that that's not how you make friends. You make friends when you're face-to-face -face in real life. But I've kind of changed my mind about that now, sort of 10 or so years later, because um, I have made friends through social media and people who have become really important in my life, people who, um, you know, like our lovely Joanne, our Prosecco Joanne, who has been such an amazing support to me this year. And it's a we've never met face to face hopefully we will one day but that doesn't matter what matters is the connection you make and and just just loving each other so Katie that's my long roundabout way of saying I really love um hearing from folk I love it when I open a card and a letter falls out because it's like, yay, yay let's let's have a chat in a letter cute little parcel so have you opened something have you or actually if if you are my friends in north america uh what time is it for you for some of you it will be about 11 a.m for some of you it's going to be about 8 a.m 8 9 a.m i always get confused you may be just getting up and also in your house when is it tradition to open your presents? Christmas is saturated in traditions, isn't it? Our family traditions. Look at the paper, isn't that cute, this pie? Little robins. So for my family, when I was a kid, it's like pass the parcel. Oh my goodness, that game of pass the parcel. Oh, is it one? so one thing I have learned about Katie, she's an illustrator, so I'm presuming illustrations, that's her own, it's, the camera's not going to pick that up, that's her own illustrations. Yeah, the, the tradition in my family as far as giving presents was that first thing in the morning, oh yeah, I was talking about washing up, wasn't I? Let's open Katie and then I can give my full attention to tradition oh my goodness that is this is so cute it's a little shrew bookmark have you made this Kate? she's made this oh my goodness look you can touch the shrew look at that long pointy snout and then it's tail <laughs> that is adorable and then it's tail marks the book and a little bead on the end to keep it in place Katie that is gorgeous handmade stoneware shrew bookmark with natural waxed cord right Katie I need to put your details down below this is Kate I think I might need reading glasses Katie Pillinger Designs, P-I-L-L-I-N-G-E-R. So you can find her at www.katiepillinger.com. There is is it going to be readable. Everyone go over and have a look at Katie's gorgeous things. <laughs> oh my goodness, sweetheart. I love that. Thank you. That's so cute. I can imagine that sitting looking out from the top of a book yeah so um thank you katie that's so lovely uh, i can imagine yeah it's it's gonna live up on my bookcase uh yeah so in my family it was quite um i suppose that there's kind of quite strict timings with things but that's because obviously my uncle was at work on christmas morning so we get up 
I didn't have problem getting up when I was a kid, but yeah, I think I think the allowable get up time was 7 a.m. Obviously try and get up before then. And the first thing everybody did was pile into grandma and granddad's bed, everyone. And we had stockings. So you'd wake up in the morning and the stocking would be at the foot of the bed. We didn't do it on the chimney, um, like in Hallmark videos. No, the stocking would be on the end of the bed. So you'd wake up and there'd be that moment where you've kind of forgotten it's Christmas Day. You're waiting to have a bit of stretch in the bed. And then you hear the, the kind of crinkly crunch as you, as you kick your stocking. So we'd pile into grandma and granddad's bed, have our stockings. And there was always, always a sprig of holly buried somewhere in the stocking i realize now as an adult what that was for was to slow us down <laughs> so we didn't just go <laughs> grabbing everything out so you had to put your hand in really carefully you weren't allowed to look and you didn't want to just jam your hand in and grab the goodies in case it was the holly but yeah after um after stockings breakfast then into the kitchen all the kids to do a bit of veg prep i.e. peeling Brussels sprouts. Uh, and then very quickly it was into our Sunday best. I guess one of the adults by then had already dealt with the bird. But yes, into our Sunday best and off to church. And then come home from church, more veg prep. It was all about the cooking and the kitchen, but that was mostly the adults. And again, I think it was quite clever, this whole stockings thing was to keep the kids occupied until lunchtime. Um, and then we'd have our lunch, our, our lovely big feast, or our bowl of ravioli. <laughs> and all the time as kids, all you want to do is get under the tree and get your hands on your goodies under the tree. But even then it was like, nope, not yet. The washing up. God, the Christmas day washing up. It was always me, my sister, and my two cousins. And it went on for, it just felt like it was never going to end. Never, ever, ever. We are in this purgatory of steaming water and dirty plates and pans. And it wasn't just, you know, quick wash up. It was wash up, dry up, put away everything. The kitchen would have to look immaculate afterwards, not a mark anywhere, nothing left out, all done. I'm sure it would take us an hour. Meanwhile, you can hear the grown-ups in the living room having a nice cup of tea and a nice little chit-chat. <laughs> you know what, quite right, quite right that the kids did that because let's face it, the adults are the ones who put the food on the table for us, weren't they? So finally, after the washing up was done and I mean, our excitement would be mounting and mounting and mounting. It's like we're beside ourselves with excitement. But then then comes a, an almost shy feeling of, I don't want my giddiness and my excitement to be quite so overt. So it's almost like a sort of a sheepish entry into the living room where all the grown-ups are all sitting down, a fire has been lit, the Christmas tree lights are on. Like I said, they're all having, they're probably on their seventh cup of tea by now. Just chatting away. And us kids are gagging for those prezzies. But then it's like, we come in a bit quietly like, yeah, it's just an ordinary day. Nothing to see here. Oh, I'm not excited about anything. And then one of the grown-ups would say, should we start passing out the presents? <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> I mean, let's face it, when you're a kid, that's all you care about, isn't it? It's what's under the tree. And you know, even now as an adult, it's like I was saying right back at the beginning that I'm so appreciative of everything that folk have sent because the thought, the thought of not having anything to open on Christmas Day is just, it's too miserable. And look, I'm grateful and I know there are people in the world who have nothing to open on Christmas Day of course so once again yes if there are any trolls watching and waiting for something to pick up on of course i recognize that and that's why i support a number of charities oh and also my uncle um i do get a present from my uncle every year but it's not for me um it's something he buys in my name for someone else so over the years i have bought 
I have had given to me, but to someone else. Um, pigs, goats, chickens, gardening tools, uh, seeds, but they've all gone to families generally in Africa. This year it's a bit different and he's supporting someone closer to home in my name. So he's he's made a donation to Crisis, which is, I was going to say it's one of the, the homeless shelters, homeless charities. They do so much more than just providing, although it's very important, they provide, you know, a bed for the night. But they have all sorts of other services to um, counselling, uh, financial advice, housing advice, getting people back into accommodation and hopefully in a way that then keeps them in accommodation. So I'm delighted. That's a beautiful present. So I am aware that throughout all of my excitement through all of this that I'm really lucky. I am really lucky. I have a roof. Oh, I have a roof over my head. Today I'm warm because I've got heating on, I've got lights, I've got gifts, I've got friends, I have security and comfort and warmth. When I say warmth, I mean literal warmth from heating, but also warmth as in um, people who love me and care about me. So yeah, I know how lucky I am. Right. Should we have another one? What did you get? Have you unwrapped something yet? I hope you have. Maybe you've had them all already. I'm going to pour my second glass. Um, is the second glass the one that's going to tip me over the edge? Happy, happy bubbles. What a treat. What a treat. Thank you, Joanne. I won't need more than this today. Goodness me. So Sarah and Ian's it's like, yeah, it's a cute one. It's like an individual person's one. Well, I'm going to keep that for New Year's. Okay, so, oh my goodness, Patricia. <laughs> More chocolate. I really have got a lot of chocolate. This looks lovely. Hazelnut and, is it milk or dark? Where are you, Patricia? I think you're, in, are you in Poland? Yes, you're in Poland, aren't you? So I'm going to put that in the chockey bag. Thank you, lovely. I'm not going to open... Actually, I, I you know what? I'm going to save that for later. Thank you. Um, that's beautifully wrapped. I'm going to take this off really carefully, though, because it's string. I can use it in the garden. <laughs> it's like... You know, maybe maybe we all need to have that um, sort of mentality again of, you know, that almost that, you know, let's not romanticise the Second World War and what our grandparents or parents, you know, had to deal with. Let's not romanticise it. But, yeah, let's, um, let's take... I can't get in. <laughs> let's take lessons from it. Um, and let's just not be so wasteful. Let's get this off really carefully. I want to rip it. I want to rip it. Well, I did rip it a little bit. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's poetry. How lovely. Vi Vishlava Shimbos. Shimboska, 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 Wisława Shimboska, I do apologise Polish friends, was winner of the 1996 Nobel Prize for Literature, I had no idea, this volume represents the definitive collection of her, oh it's Wisława, of course it's A on the end, it's feminine, represents a collection of her poetry in English, along with the 100 poems of her acclaimed collection, view with a grain of sand it brings 64 newly translated poems how that's really lovely i'm not kind of going woo woo fireworks because that's totally unexpected you've really kind of you really chopped one out of the left field there 
that is so lovely and it's kind of a bit weird i'm having a lot of weirdness at the moment with the spirals of surfacing things coming around because I was talking, you'll have seen that video by now, about her being a poet and there are moments where it's almost poetry. Since then I've read another book, I'll bring it to you in another day. And again there's there's something poetic about it. And I was thinking, crikey, I haven't read poetry for a long time. Pardon me, oh, that's the Prosecco. Yeah, not in terms of sort of sat with a whole volume of poetry. I dip in every now and again. I'll quite often, my poetry is all up there, way at the top of the shelf. I'll quite often um, pull a volume off and just read one of my favorite poems. I think I was talking about Adelstrop not too long ago and the other day, where is it? Oh, it's tucked behind there. There's a volume of Ted Hughes. And literally just a few days ago, Patricia, I was thinking, I haven't bought poetry for a long time. I haven't looked at a new poet. I don't mean new as in contemporary to our lives, as in, you know, 20th or 21st century. I mean new as in new to me, a poet I've never read. And I was thinking the other day, you know what, next time I'm in the second-hand bookshop or whatever, I'm going to go and look at the poetry section and just find a new poet to read. So that kind of explains my slightly quiet reaction that I'm a bit weirded out. <laughs> um, gosh, how lovely, how lovely. I need to go online and learn how to pronounce her name. An unexpected meeting. We treat each other with exceeding courtesy. We say, it's great to see you after all these years. Our tigers drink milk, our hawks tread the ground, our sharks have all drowned, our wolves yawn beyond an open cage. We fall asleep, sorry, we fall silent in mid-sentence, all smiles past help. Our humans don't know how to talk to one another. Oh my goodness. Right, that's that's beautiful. Thank you, lovely. That is... Yeah, that's... That's really interesting timing, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Gosh, what beautiful books. What beautiful books. I'm really thinking about the poetry now. It's funny, isn't it, how um, our tastes, our lives, these, these circles I keep thinking about, how we come back to things, how we move away from things and then come back to them, timings in our lives, how, how the time is right for something. Like that book, Surfacing, I bought it on Boxing Day 2019. Um, <laughs> my sister, bless her. The, um, the Boxing Day Walk, right, Boxing Day. The Boxing Day Walk, I hate the Boxing Day Walk with all my soul. <laughs> my family are obsessed with going for a walk on Boxing Day. The Boxing Day Walk, I know loads of families are obsessed too. When I was a kid, and I'm talking up to the age of 18 when I, you know, still you have to do everything as a family, as in family Christmas. Then you go to university and suddenly it's like, yeah, I can do my own Christmas now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, just it doesn't matter what the weather is, howling gale, freezing cold, boxing day, you're going out for a walk. So, you know, it might be 9.30 on Boxing Day morning. I've got myself really cosy right into the corner of a sofa, maybe a bit of a blanket, a big woolly jumper on, one of my books for Christmas, or I might have brought a book from home with me just in case I didn't get a book for Christmas, but usually there was a book for Christmas. So I'm, kind of, I'm just, just reading the first words of this, you know, brand new story. And it's like, right, come on, chop, chop, get your shoes on, get your coat, we're going out. Why? 
why? Why are you dragging me out in this freezing cold weather, in this lashing rain and howling game? Why? I don't understand it. Where are we going? And it's like, we're going to the top of the hill and back again. So we're not actually going anywhere with any purpose. We're just literally going to the top of the hill and back down. So 10 o'clock, off we go. Howling gale, walk up to the top of the hill, walk back down, get back in the car, drive home. By now it's sort of, you know, one o'clock, right, lunchtime, cold spread. What was the, what was the point of that? <laughs> now, it's not that I don't like going out for a walk. I love going for a walk, but in the summer, <laughs> in the summer when it's nice to be outside, I never understood it. I'll come back to surfacing in a second. So I was thinking about this the other day too. I told you this time of year brings up all sorts of memories and reflections, doesn't it? But I was thinking, you know, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have hurt any of them to just leave me at home with my book. You know, surely by the age of 14 or 15, you can leave me at home alone. Let's face it, at that age, I was working. I was already, every Saturday and Sunday, I worked. I looked after a whole shop on my own. I worked on my own, you know, so I'm looking after the till, the customer. I'm looking after all of that on my own. I am a responsible young person. So, you know, when you go for your, Chris, uh, your Boxing Day walk, I'm really happy for you that, that you all enjoy that so much. But I hate it. I hate being cold. So how about you leave me at home with my book? Let me be happy. You all go off and do your walk and you be happy. Don't drag me along making me miserable. And what if it had all been reversed? What if they were all desperate to go out for their walk and I forced them to stay indoors in total silence reading? <laughs> It would never have happened. It would never have happened. But yeah, the um, surfacing, there it is. It's got in pencil written. I write in pencil, never in pen, so it can be rubbed out if needs be. But it says, Durham, Boxing Day 2019. Because, and why I'm kind of laughing and saying, bless my sister, the previous year on Boxing Day, we've done the Boxing Day walk. And um, actually, I know there's loads of you up in that neck of the woods. Uh, the walk that Boxing Day was to the Cook Monument. So it's atop a hill. Yeah, there's a load of you nodding, aren't you? Aren't you? You know the area. Um, so it's only, so the last bit is, is kind of steep-ish. And that walk in the summer, I've done that walk in the summer, it's lovely and the view is vast, it's amazing, it is it is gorgeous up there, it's beautiful. But in the winter, when it's freezing cold and the wind is howling and the air is wet with drizzle, to me it's a miserable experience. But anyway, on in that particular year, in 2018, um, was it 2018? Yeah, it was 2018. My legs by then, they're not as bad as they are now, but they were really starting to trouble me. I'd had to leave work because of it. Um, I was okay on the flat. You wouldn't When I was walking on the flat, you wouldn't necessarily know, but that steep bit, it really hurt and I couldn't manage it. Anyway, they were all at the top. I was only halfway up. They'd all gone, they were at the top, done the view. Oh, isn't this lovely? And they were all halfway back down again before I'd even got to the top. And it was just miserable. And anyway, my sister picked up on that. She realised that actually this was no fun for Vivi. Never mind the whole stay at home with a book. Now, with her knees the way are, this is no fun for her. So the following year, 2019, it's like, let's abandon the idea of a Boxing Day walk. But by the same token, we need to get her out of the village. And we need to get her out of the village by 9.30 at the latest. Because, oh dear heart um her village still has a hunt a boxing day hunt and it's it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that i'm probably going to be a bit anti-hunt and i am um i'm not going to go on about that but anyway my sister decided that to get me out of the village for one of two reasons she was worried that either a i'd get really upset as in tearful upset by that which is a strong possibility or b and i think this is what she was worried about more 
is that I'd go out and be a sab for the day. I'd go and sab the thing. So I didn't realise that she was really chivying me that morning. So we planned to go to Durham for the day. Um, she used to work at the cathedral. So I think by then she left, I think she'd moved to a new job. But we were going to go to the Durham for the day. It's a beautiful old town to just mooch about. And we had tickets, she'd booked us t cinema tickets for, it had just come out at that point, the new, the newest version of Little Women. Loved it, I really loved it. And so we can go to Durham, we can go to the cathedral, we've got tickets in the afternoon for the cinema, we can have a little mooch around, some really lovely shops there. There used to be, there was a really nice sweetie shop, you can old-fashioned, you know, where every, all the sweets are sold loose. Um, anyway, yeah, so I, I, I remember chivying me, chivying me that morning. Come on, come on, we need to get, we need to get going. And I was like, what's the hurry, sis? And she's like, oh, the traffic, you know, start building. And I was just thinking, oh, my God, cool your boots, will you? And I was getting a bit humpy with her because I'm not good in the morning anyway. I'm really not good in the morning. So I, I was already, feel, I'd woken up Mardi, because I always do, and my sister's nagging me, that's where, it's like, she's just nagging me, and it's like, all right, keep your hair on. <laughs> anyway, so I think she managed to get me shoved into the car about 25 past nine, and she's like, ah, oh, okay, I could tell she was starting to relax, and like, okay, let's, let's go and have a nice day, but really, sis, you need to relax, it's, it's probably whatever. And just as we were pulling out of the village, I saw the first the first few horses coming in. I saw a trailer. I saw in the back of it, I could see through all the beagles. And I, and I looked at my sis and I said, now I know why you were in a hurry. Thanks, sis. <laughs> oh. Uh, sorry. <laughs> that was bound to happen at some point today. Um, yeah. So she whisked me out of the village and we had a really lovely, uh, lovely day in Durham that day and invariably ended up in a bookshop. <laughs> we both like mooching the bookshops and I think Surfacing had just been recently published. Anyway, there was a display of it on, on a little table. There was a display and I saw the cover and I just thought, I've got to have it. Why was it? Yeah, the poetry. Sorry, this goes back to that volume of poems from Patricia. So I bought it on Boxing Day 2019 and it's been sat on my shelf and, and every now and again I've picked it up and I thought, no, not, not no, no, don't fancy it at the minute. And, and that's what I mean about sometimes it's when, when the moment is right. And the moment was right uh, a few days ago for me to pick it up. And I loved it, I loved it. And I and I got to the end of it, and I was aware of that thing. When I picked it up, I was thinking, it's funny, isn't it, how it feels the right time to read it now, and it hasn't felt like the right time at any point in the last sort of two or three years. And as I closed it, I thought that again. And I thought, I wonder what kind of book it would have been if I'd read it a year ago. Um, you know, books change depending on who we are when we read them. What our life experience is at the point of reading them dictates, you know, how how we will react to the book. So, yeah, Patricia, a volume of poetry from a poet I don't know. That's great. I'm going to really enjoy diving into that, looking up her name online to get a, a pronunciation for it so that I can talk about her in the future when I've read a bit. I've just realised, I've probably been going on for ages, but somehow I always feel that's okay at Christmas because, <laughs> Pippi Longstocking, um, I do that, um, yeah, I feel like, especially for those of you who are on your own today, and maybe it's not out of choice, then let's just be company for each other and enjoy each other's company. I didn't know what I was going to talk about today. <laughs> I managed to make sure it bores a vacuum, Vivian bores silence. No, I enjoy silence sometimes too. And I've just looked at one of the notes. I made a note of something that I thought I would talk about, 
but I've got gone off on tangents. So what I'm going to do, I won't, I won't be too much longer. I'm just reaching down for another gift from Marilyn. There are two, another. Oh, I think that's two bags. <laughs> I'm not sure. I want to open this though because because I, I did give it a squidge and I wondered what it was. So one of the things I was going to talk about today is because you know the, there is so much tradition wrapped up in Christmas, isn't there? By the way, did you open something? I I keep asking and then forgetting to follow that up. Did you open something? Hopefully, with all gifts, there are either things that we could really do with, like a new hot water bottle, Nikki. Thank you so much. Um, some lovely food to put in the pantry, a beautiful handmade, oh, I'm reaching down for my little shoe, a beautiful handmade object which we can love and use in the years to come, books which, you know, furnish our souls, oh, also from Veronique, some seeds, some nasturtium seeds, and I loved this, I'll just talk about this briefly, look, this might be a long one today, who cares, is anyone going anywhere, let's just hang together. Um, as soon as I opened this, I, I sort of did a, oh, yay, because my uh, nasturtiums at the garden, they self-seed themselves everywhere. Great. I don't need to ever plant another nasturtium at my allotment. But when I move, one of my must-haves on my, on my list is ground floor, to my, my two must-haves are ground floor, garden. So... Let's get planting a few nasturtium seeds at my new garden. It's, I don't know, because I keep so mentioning this, it won't be any time soon. It's more likely to be at the tail end of 2024 that I, I get moved. If it happens, let's, you know, touch wood, everything goes smoothly. But, um, so it may be too late in the year to plant anything. Um, but I picture, I fantasise about, um, a garden full of things which are happy to self-seed. It's, I don't know, um, I picture so many different types of gardens when I picture my my own little garden of the future. Um, it's, I was thinking about the whole neat and tidy thing. I will like neat and tidy in terms of pathways something solid because obviously you know as I get a bit more wobbly I want to have solid pathways and it might be that it's a really tiny garden like a courtyard garden and the whole garden is paved with in my head it's with you know old old brick um so there will be neatness in terms of pathways there might even be neatness in terms of raised beds that are again probably built from reclaimed brick old brick but within the gardening because yes i want to grow some vegetables but it will be much more about how to describe it so it will be practical in terms of having some vegetables but it will be more like i'm going to be painting on a canvas it will be much more free and easy and blousy and yeah things self-seed things that tumble over edges things that you know get a little bit out of hand or whatever that's what i see for myself when i paint my new garden by paint i mean to sow my garden um so nasturtiums are perfect for that pop them in let them go where they want to go let them trail everywhere let them self-seed let them just come back with abundance and joy every year. So, yeah, Veronique, when I opened that packet, I did I squealed with joy because I thought, I'm going to get emotional again. What is wrong with me today? Crikey. Uh, the emotion is probably aided by a glass and a third of Prosecco. God, Christmas can be such an emotional time, though, can't it? I think that's something we have to bear in mind when we're with other people around this time of year is... And maybe that's why I, I quite like being on my own at Christmas these days is if I get a bit weepy, <laughs> I can just have a good old cry and it's fine. You know, crying is healthy. I mean, not all day, every day. I don't think that's healthy. But every now and again, having a little cry, um, yeah, it's okay. Anyway, so 
seeds, powder, blah. But anyway, this Marilyn. <laughs> oh, right. You all know I am a list maker. It's that OCD part of my brain. And I love notebooks, notepads, notebooks. I love notepads because that's what I do my lists on. Notebooks are for writing things in that are more permanent, like if I'm writing a short story or a poem. This is a notepad. That's very pretty, isn't it? That's very pretty, that's very lovely. That's a practical notepad. <laughs> Look, it says made especially for you. Marilyn, that is so cute. <laughs> so like, this is my to-do list. You know what? Oh, I love this idea. I am a genius. So on my to-do list, to-do, 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 to-do. And at the bottom, I can scribble in here, be kind to Billy. Oh, Marilyn, that is so cute. I love that. Thank you. And a bookmark. <laughs> She believed, what's it say? She believed she could, but she was really tired, so she didn't. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah, ain't that the truth? Oh, and there's a little card on the back. I just saw your card taped there. That, I'm gonna save that for, and I think, I think it might be chocolate and tea I'm gonna save those, otherwise we will be here all day. And I want some, I want some private stuff today too. Just a li little, just a little bit. I love that, a notepad with my name on so I can write notes to myself. And now finally, Esther. Oh yeah, so the thing I didn't talk about that I meant to talk about. And it was some, um, I've just, hang on, I'm, I'm so distracted. I am six years old and there are still presents under the tree and I wanna fish them out. So I've had this lovely, but I can smell it, I can, yeah. This lovely bundle from Sarah and Ian. And if you remember, in the summer, I got a really beautiful package from Sarah and Ian. And it had in it, oh, hidden by cards as well, the, the book Salt on My Skin, the wild swimming book uh, from that lass in Orkney. And all sorts of other bits and pieces. And at the time, I said, the smell is heavenly. And at the time, I said, it was a really lovely package to receive anyway it was a sort of a thinking of you package but what I loved about it was and I, I can't remember if I said it at the time in a video if I managed to message Sarah somehow or other anyway I loved it because the whole package reminded me of the sort of package my sister used to put together for me so it was a bit like oh my god you have the same taste as my sister so it was really lovely. And I opened this the other day after it came in the post. It's a box. And it just made me think of my sister again. So Sarah, thank you. Um, and I love, I love this little bag. Can you see? It's, um, I love puffins anyway. But it's, it's all by the RNLI, our beautiful lifeboat people. And remember, in my sister's will, she'd bequeathed something to the RNLI. So I love that and I love a little juke bag anyway and that's a really cute, hand that's a really good size to put on the side in the kitchen, on the kitchen counter, if I wanna chuck, I don't know, some bits of fruit in or anything, anything. I like, I love baskets and little bags like this where I can just hold together a few bits and bobs in that moment. But this, this is what I've been smelling this. I think it's it's a lush bath bomb called a lump of coal. I wish you could smell it. It's got cinnamon leaf oil and Brazilian orange oil. And it smells crazy good. It smells really crazy good. Thank you, gorgeous. Um, so, there's, gosh, there's, I mean, it's so many gifts. Thank you, all of you beautiful people. I've gone for this one. You know why I've gone for this one, don't you? Because <laughs> it looks like a book. It looks like, and I'm going to save, <clears throat> Sarah, I will save, Sarah and Ian, sorry. I will save 
some of yours for later too. But I just, beautiful paper. Oh, that's gorgeous. Look, a, a hound racing. Actually, there's a full one on the back. That is gorgeous paper. And again, you know what? It's the kind of paper my sister would choose. I know some of you are, you know, you're, you're having a first Christmas without someone this year. I'm not going to get maudlin. Um, and you know what? Yeah, it's flipping horrible. It's just horrible. So, you know you have my empathy. So lovely. Oh, it's Angela Harding, that's why. So there's notebooks. There, there we go. Look, I just said how much I love having notepads and notebooks. I wonder if you can see what they're all going to... Oh, what the heck? Let's open it. <laughs> I want to show them to you. I love that with the... Is it a curly or avocet? Avis, no, the avocet's beak goes down and up, doesn't it? This is a curly. And talking of notebooks, I all, there was also a little one from Veronique that's adorable. Can you see? It's all, um, it's a bookshelf full of, it's all these kind of Edwardian, or turn of the 19th, 20th century uh, books for girls. It's all stuff for girls. Girls gossip. Was it the, the jolliest term on record? Oh, Angela Brazil. Yeah, I'm sure we all read some Angela Brazil when we were little. Love that. That's great. That's handbag size. I always, not that I have a handbag, but you know, my sort of, my, my little sort of crossbody satchel. I always, always have a notebook because you never know when you might want to start your great work of fiction. <laughs> you never know. You might meet someone in the street who tells you a fantastic nugget of information that you don't want to forget. Oh, these are lovely. So, is it a curl you? And then, oh, this is lovely. Look, this, a person just face into the weather, enjoying an autumn, autumn stroll. And then, oh, I love this. It's a harbour and swans. It's so, actually, let me show you open the whole thing. Works of art. Sarah and Ian, thank you. I mean, everybody, thank you. Thank you so much. That's That's been the biggest, warmest hug. It, it, really, it really does mean the world to me. Gosh, gosh, I never got onto that. Ah, let's just do it now. I'll rattle through these. This sort of Christmas tradition I was talking about this came up the other day with a friend. Sorry, another quick blow. And um, as a friend mentioning, uh, they were going to spend the afternoon watching Love Actually. You know, I've, it's, it's a, is it a Christmas film? It always seems to be on at Christmas. And I said, I've never seen it. She was like, what? Like, no, I've never seen Love Actually. And then it got me into a never have I ever um, mode in my head to do with Christmas. So I jotted a few of them down. Um, never have I ever, when it comes to Christmas films, I've never seen Love Actually. I've never seen Home Alone. I've never seen Miracle on whatever number street it happens on. I've never seen It's a Beautiful Life. Now, I've never seen it and that's, I have actively chosen not to watch it because I love Jimmy Stewart. I adore him. He might have been my first ever crush when I was about seven. I loved him. Um, but I know that it's a bit of a weepy one and I think it's the kind of weepy that would give me a migraine. <laughs> so I've always avoided it. Maybe I'll watch it one of these days, but yeah, so all those Christmas films, I've never seen Elf, I've never seen The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, I've never seen Jingle Bells. I I just don't think I've ever really watched Christmas films. I have seen um, 
what's it called that White Christmas is in? Is it Holiday Inn? Is it Holiday Inn that's got White Christmas song in it? Yes, I've seen that one yonks ago. Carrying on with the Never Have I Ever. Have you? So, Never Have I Ever eaten cranberry sauce. Oh, why are you putting jam on your plate? <laughs> why are you putting jam on your savoury meal? No way. Jose, no thank you. Listen, each to their own. To me, it's like, it's pudding, it's fruit, it's jam, it's put it on your toast or your crumpets. Don't put it on a roast potato. Are you mad? <laughs> no, no thank you. Um, I never, oh, this is a sad one. As a kid, I never got to visit a Father Christmas grotto. Was never taken to see Father Christmas. But you know what? I turned out okay. Oh, there was another... Oh, I've lost, lost my card. Where is it? I wanted to say... Oh, twist. Oh my goodness, I've completely forgotten. I've, there's another box of goodies here. This is from... This was from Susan. Oh my goodness, I'm so... I can't find something. Tom. An eight-year-old called Tom. Thank you. Thank you for your parcel too that I think Mummy helped you to put together, didn't she? Thank you, lovelies. Um, yeah, thank goodness I remember. That's just by thinking about going and visiting Father Christmas in his grotto. I didn't ever get to do it as a kid, but I hope all of your kids, grandchildren this year, whoever got to do it. And Tom, and I, without your card, What's your mum's name, Tom? What is your mummy called? Was it Linda? I, I'm really, I'm so sorry, beautiful. Uh, the thing is, unless I've got something in front of me, I'm so rubbish at remembering things these days. I might have to add it underneath. Anyway, hello to Tom. And I hope Father Christmas knows how good you are all year and that you got something really, really lovely to open today. <laughs> so yeah, I never got to see Father Christmas in his grotto. I hope you did, Tom. You are up in Leeds, aren't you? Yes, in Leeds. There's a lot of you in Yorkshire, aren't there? Uh, yes, carrying on with the never have ever. Ah, now this one. And again, it's one that I'm going to keep looking on the ground because I've got so many bits and pieces around me and I really want to find the card from Tom and his mummy. Oh, I didn't put it up there, did I? No, it's a little white card with a snowflake on it. Oh, Vivi. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, I'll find it later. Yeah, so the, the last on this little list of Never Have I Ever... Never have I ever eaten Christmas lunch, dinner, whatever you want to call it, at um, either a restaurant or, let's say, a posh hotel. And I was thinking about this the other day because I kept seeing a trailer for a programme, didn't watch it, but I think, is it the Plaza in New York? It's one of those kind of, pardon me, early 20th century, so about 1900. Ten, one of those grand hotels rather like in the UK like say the Savoy in London so it's a trailer about um, that hotel and their preparations for serving 250 or something guests on Christmas Day their Christmas lunch and I would, I've kind of always thought oh that's weird going, going to a restaurant or even you know a pub or a hotel for your Christmas dinner, that's a bit weird, that's not family, that's not right for Christmas. But as the years go by, I kind of think, oh, it's brilliant, it's absolutely absolute brilliant idea if you can afford it. Someone else does all the cooking, someone else does all the washing up. How great, <laughs> yay! I think it's something that I would, yeah, I'd definitely try it. I don't, I mean, I, I'm not going to because, you know, financially, but um, yeah, why not? Because there have been a couple of Christmases. There was one years ago, I was still living in Kensington. 
and there's the pub it's you're almost kind of getting into holland park um is it the windsor castle i know there'll be some of you who are west londonites who will know is it the windsor castle i want to say the anglesey arms it's not i think it's the windsor castle just as you're heading towards holland park and they always used to open on christmas day in the afternoon just for a few hours and it's quite nice that year uh my boyfriend and i we stayed in london and it was just the two of us had i been working it was in my acting days i might have been working right up to christmas anyway it was just the two of us we'd had our christmas lunch and conversely to what i've just said about the boxing day walk we fancied a walk but actually it was a really mild it's one of those really mild days so we walked I think we must have walked through Holland Gardens. Anyway, we ended up at this pub, I think it's the Windsor Castle, and had, we had two or three pints each, and it was great, there was such a great atmosphere. It's one, it's quite a locals pub. I don't think there were any tourists in there. Um, and it was just that nice thing of, everyone's had their Christmas lunch, everyone's done their family bit, change a scene, let's pop down the pub, we'll have a couple of jars. It was really lovely. And then about, oh, five, six years ago? No, I was still working, so it's more like maybe 10 years ago. Um, I worked night shift, so I had the, Chris, the, the night shift bef that took us into Christmas Eve and the night shift of Christmas Eve into Christmas Day I was working. So I came home from work Christmas Day morning I'd finished for a couple of days before I'd be back in. So came home, had a quick kip for about four hours or so, possibly even a bit less. Anyway, woke myself up at one o'clock. Just had a quick bite. To, I might have a piece of toast or something. But then joined up with local friends at one of my local pubs, not for Christmas lunch, but again, just for a couple of drinks on Christmas Day afternoon. And it was gorgeous. It was absolutely gorgeous because, oh, there were all sorts of people in there. And, you know, some fact like older people, young people, families, really little kids. And kids, the kids had brought their toys to the pub. So <laughs> it was kind of like, you know, you kind of walking to the bar and like, whoop, jump, because there's like a little what you call remote control, a little remote control truck is flying through the pub. Uh, it's like, oh, jump over that and carrying your drinks back and there's toys everywhere. And I mean, I, normally I don't like the chaos of kids in pubs. I don't, I mean, I love kids, but when I go to the pub, I want to just sit and have a drink and a talk, you know, a quiet talk with a friend or whatever. But Christmas day, kids, toys everywhere. Old people who were a bit worse for wear singing. God, it was a bit mad. It was a bit of um it wasn't a posh pub, let's say that. All the better for it. And uh, yeah, it was great. So once upon a time I might have poo-pooed the idea of having your Christmas meal at a pub or restaurant or hotel. But you know what, why not? Let someone else do the work for you. Like I said, if you can afford it. Let someone else do the work for you. Let someone else do the washing up. Or get down to your local boozer. Meet some of your neighbours and share a couple of glasses and a bit of cheer together. Whatever. It's all fine. If it's fine for you and if it's working for you, brilliant. <sighs> right. I have now... Hang on, let's just top up this glass. I have now been talking for more than long enough. I told you, honestly, if they gave out Olympic medals, I'd get the gold every year. So I'm going to round things up. Um, oh! Sue's big box is lovely. I'm just going to grab something out. From, so I said Sue, it's Susan. I can sit on the box. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. What? Oh, these are brilliant. Now, listen, shouldn't every Christmas contain socks? But I've just read the label. This is brilliant. Can you see what they're called? Reading socks. Susan, these are 
God, these are lovely. What's it say? Sherpa lining made from 100% recycled plastic bottles. That's fantastic. They're gorgeous. Oh, and they've got little, they've got slight little dots on the bottom for grip. These are thick. Oh my goodness, it's like they're lined with, they're so thick. These, Susan, okay, <laughs> first thing I've pulled out. Look, I just realised my face is so red with the heat on and the uh, Prosecco. They are gorgeous. I love the idea of reading socks. Well, I love the fact that it's labelled reading socks because that's exactly what I do. I have an ordinary pair of socks on and then when I snuggle down to read, I put an extra pair of woolly socks over the top to keep me really, because then I'm sitting still to read. So I'm going to be in my woolly socks reading Polish Nobel Prize winning poets or in my socks reading about an Arctic, Antarctic expedition by a bunch of women or reading about trees talking to each other. I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful, thank you. Right, before this all goes Pete Tong again, um, have yourselves a merry little Christmas. I hope you've all had the day you wanted. Um, I hope, I hope you got what you wished for, and I'm not necessarily talking about material stuff. You know what, if there are bridges to be built, friends, family, whatever it is, maybe after you finish watching me today, maybe pick up the phone and speak to maybe that person you haven't spoken to for a while. Um, this is a time of year, I think, when people are, are a little bit more open, a little bit more receptive to forgiveness, shall we say. Um, so yeah, whoever you've been doing it with today, I hope it's the people you wanted to be doing it with. If you're on your own, like me, I hope that was through choice. I hope if nothing else, I've been a bit of company for you. You've been a bit of company for me. I know you don't talk back, but I kind of hear you in my head. I don't mean that in a weirdo way. <laughs> I hear it in your your cards and letters. So, yeah, I think whatever the day means to you, I hope it has been what you wanted. This has certainly been, so far, the day's not over yet, this has certainly been um, the perfect day for me. My I can see my battery symbol flashing. I'm about to be cut off. So... On that note, I'm going to raise a glass to say cheers to all of us. Cheers to those who aren't with us this year. And cheers to a whole nother year to come. And hopefully this time next year I'll be pulling a cracker because it would have been unpacked out of the box that it's currently in. I don't know where it is. But never mind a whole year's time. For today, I wish you all peace, joy and abundance of love. Happy Christmas, everyone. Oy vey, what an emotional one this time. But yeah, happy Christmas. Sante, down the hatch. Loads and loads of love to you all. Until the next one. Cheerio.